what are the profit belongs to subsidiary company before acquisition or pre acquisition period is called as pre acquisition profit holding company is a company which acquires or which holds more than 50% of shares from another company what are the reserve belongs to after the date of acquisition that's called as post acquisition reserve or revenue reserve the excess money paid by the holding company to subsidiary company it is called as goodwill hello my dear students i am your aj sir faculty department of commerce and management vidyashram first grade college a temple of excellence my dear students today's session is all about corporate accounting to bcom fourth sem session 2 and today's session is on accounting for holding company let's go to the first slide this is the meaning of holding company what is the meaning of holding company holding company is a company which acquires or which holds more than 50% of shares from another company then it is called as holding company or parent company so the another company which sells the shares to holding company that company left with minority shares or very limited number of shares compared to holding company that's why it is called as subsidiary company or subordinate company we can give one more example for this let's assume it is a, a company we have a company or we are the owners of a company this a company purchase shares more than 50% of shares from b company so the company which purchase more than 50% of shares from b company it is called as holding company or parent company so when the company purchase more than 50% of shares then it is called as holding company the another company which sells the shares will be called as subsidiary company why it is called as subsidiary company once the holding company acquires more than 50% of shares it can controls the any decisions or it can it can controls the board of directors it can controls the number of shares and more voting rights because the holding company which is having more voting rights it can easily control the subsidiary company that's why holding company will be having more rights on subsidiary company automatically it will get more authority to control the subsidiary company now let's go to the meaning of holding company according to the accounting standard 21 issued by the institute of chartered accountants of india a parent or holding company is an enterprise it is a company or an enterprise that is controlled wholly or partly by another company known as parent company so holding company here a subsidiary company is a company which is controlled by the parent company or holding company next one in holding company we have to understand certain concepts what are the important concept we have to understand let's see here first one pre acquisition period post acquisition period what do you mean by pre acquisition period and what do you mean by post acquisition period see let's assume this line is a one year duration so this is first jan 2000 19 to 31st december 2019 this is one year duration a holding company or company a which acquires more than 50% of shares from company b a company a which acquires more than 50% of shares from company b so this is the opening date this is the closing date so a company purchase the shares on first july 2019 so this is the one year duration so whatever the period before acquisition is called as pre acquisition period and after acquisition period is called as post acquisition period so before acquisition is called as pre acquisition period after acquisition is called as post acquisition period so it is a one year duration so you can hear it is the period which falls on or before the date on which the shares of the subsidiary company are 
acquired by the holding company a holding company has acquired shares from the subsidiary company so this is the one year duration whatever the period or the time before acquisition is called as pre acquisition period and after the acquisition is called as post acquisition period this also post acquisition period post acquisition period is the period which falls after the date of which holding company acquires the subsidiary company so this is the after the date of acquisition is called as post acquisition period let's go to the next slide pre acquisition reserve post acquisition reserve already i explained with a line see this is the one year duration starts from 1st jan 2019 ends on 31st december 2019 the holding company has acquired shares on 1st july 2019 so before acquisition is called as pre acquisition period after acquisition is called as post acquisition period for example if a subsidiary company having a reserve of 10000 rupees at the end of the year in your balance sheet they will give reserve profit and loss account everything at the end of the year let's assume there is 10000 rupees reserve at the end of the year there is a 10000 reserve so this 10000 if you divide 10000 pre acquisition and post acquisition we can get 5000 rupees pre acquisition this is 6 months no because so 10000 into 6 by 12 that you'll get 5000 rupees so 5000 belongs to pre acquisition period remaining 5000 belongs to post acquisition period so this pre acquisition reserve is also called as capital reserve post acquisition reserve is also called as revenue reserve capital reserve revenue reserve see pre acquisition reserve any reserve appearing in the books of subsidiary company in the pre acquisition period is termed as the pre acquisition reserve of the subsidiary company so pre acquisition reserve is also called as capital reserve keep this in mind next one post acquisition reserve any reserve appearing in the books of subsidiary company in the post acquisition period is called as post acquisition reserve of subsidiary company so subsidiary company which is having 10000 rupees reserve okay at the end of the year in the balance sheet so before acquisition whatever the amount belongs to before acquisition is called as pre acquisition reserve or capital reserve what are the reserve belongs to after the date of acquisition that's called as post acquisition reserve or revenue reserve let's go to the next slide pre acquisition profit pre acquisition loss again one more example this is one year duration year starts from 11/2019 or ends in 31st december 2019 the date of acquisition is on 1st july 2019 see year starts from 1st jan ends on 31st december but we have acquired the shares in subsidiary company on 1st 7 2019 the this period before acquisition period is called as pre acquisition period and this is also called as capital reserve or capital profit whatever the amount we have before acquisition it may be profit or it may be reserve that it is called as pre acquisition profit or pre acquisition reserve so it is also called as capital profit or capital reserve so whatever the profit or reserve there will be in the subsidiary company that will be called as post acquisition profit or post acquisition reserve or revenue profit or revenue reserve here pre acquisition profit the profit and loss account credit balance standing in the books of subsidiary company in the pre acquisition period is called as pre acquisition profit so what are the profit belongs to subsidiary company before acquisition or pre acquisition period is called as pre acquisition profit here pre acquisition loss the profit and loss account debit balance debit balance means what it will be in the asset side of the balance sheet see loss will be in asset side of the balance sheet and the profit will be in the liability side of the balance sheet 
So if the debit balance standing in the books of the subsidiary company during the pre-acquisition period is called as pre-acquisition loss. So whatever the loss belongs to before acquisition period, then it is called as pre-acquisition loss. If it is a profit, pre-acquisition profit. If it is a loss, pre-acquisition loss. It is also called as capital profit or capital loss. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. Post-acquisition profit and post-acquisition loss. What do you mean by post-acquisition profit and post-acquisition loss? Already I explained. What do you mean by pre-acquisition profit and pre-acquisition loss? In pre-acquisition profit and pre-acquisition loss means the profit and loss before acquisition. Post-acquisition profit and post-acquisition loss means the profit or loss after acquisition. It is also called as revenue profit or revenue loss. Pre-acquisition profit and pre-acquisition loss is called as capital profit or capital loss. Post-acquisition profit and post-acquisition loss is called as revenue profit and revenue loss. So, the profit earned by the subsidiary company in the post-acquisition period is called as post-acquisition profit of the subsidiary company. Again, the loss incurred by the subsidiary company in the post-acquisition period is called as post-acquisition loss of the subsidiary company. Again, this is the one year duration. Year starts on 1-1-2019, ends on 31st. 12-2019. So, whatever the profit after acquisition is called as post-acquisition profit. Whatever the loss after acquisition is called as post-acquisition loss. Post-acquisition loss or post-acquisition profit is also called as revenue profit or revenue loss. At the same time for reserve also, pre-acquisition loss, pre-acquisition profit, pre-acquisition reserve and post-acquisition reserve. At the same time for profit also, pre-acquisition profit, post-acquisition profit. Now, let's go to, let's understand the goodwill. What do you mean by goodwill? This is also one of the important concepts we have to understand. Excess price paid by the holding company for the equity shareholders of the subsidiary company over the paid up value of the shares is generally considered as the cost of control or the payment of goodwill. Now, what do you mean by that? See, for example, I purchase 5,000 shares in subsidiary company. Okay. For example, let's assume subsidiary company is having 6,000 shares. Out of 6,000 shares, holding company purchase 5,000 shares. Holding company purchase 5,000 shares and subsidiary company is left with only 1,000 shares. Okay, since the holding company has purchased more than 50% of shares from subsidiary company, this company will be considered as a majority company or holding company. The company which is left with minority shares will be considered as subsidiary company. For example, if the share value or the face value of share is 10 rupees, total shares I have purchased is 5000 shares. So, the total amount I have to pay is 50,000. This is the actual amount I have to pay to the subsidiary company as a holding company. But if I paid more than this face value of share, for example, let us assume I have paid 75,000. So actual face value of the share is 50,000, but I have paid 75,000. The 25,000 what I paid extra that is called as goodwill. Are you understanding? See, whatever the excess amount paid by the holding company while purchasing the shares in subsidiary company, that amount is called as goodwill. If in case, if I paid lesser than the face value of share, for example, the total amount I have to pay is 50,000. I just paid only 40,000. So, remaining 10,000 rupees, what I had to pay, that should be considered as a capital reserve. The excess money paid by the holding company to subsidiary company, it is called as goodwill. If I pay lesser amount than the face value of subsidiary company's face value, then it is called as capital reserve. So the goodwill is also called as cost of control. The cost of control or goodwill is also includes the excess price paid by the holding company for the 
preference shareholders of the subsidiary company not only equity shares even though it, it may be preference share if you pay excess amount then the face value of preference shares in the subsidiary company then it is also called as goodwill even the excess price paid by the holding company for the debentures of the subsidiary company say it may be equity shares it may be preference shares or it may be debenture any excess amount paid by the holding company to subsidiary company then it is called as goodwill this point you have to understand next one calculation of minority what are the important steps we are going to do while doing the problem of holding company what are those first one calculation of minority interest we have to calculate the minority interest what do you mean by minority interest what are the amount has to payable from the holding company to subsidiary company that is called as minority interest see we have to pay the actual face value of the shares to the minority company and also capital profit of the minority company revenue profit of the minority company capital reserve of the minority company revenue reserve of the minority company these are all the amount we have to the holding company has to pay to subsidiary company that amount should be shown in the liability side of the balance sheet till then we pay the amount to subsidiary company that is called as minority interest what do you mean by majority interest this is the interest or it is the amount belongs to majority shareholders minority interest means this is the amount belongs to minority shareholders what do you mean by majority interest majority interest is the amount belongs to majority shareholders or holding company next one calculation of goodwill or capital reserve i already explained what do you mean by capital reserve and what do you mean by goodwill the excess amount paid by the holding company apart from its face value that means subsidiary company's face value then the amount is called as goodwill if the lesser amount than the face value of the subsidiary company shares of subsidiary company it is called as capital reserve so we have to calculate goodwill and capital reserve then we have to prepare consolidated balance sheet of holding company with subsidiary company so there will be two balance sheet balance sheet belongs to subsidiary company and balance sheet belongs to holding company will make the balance sheet into one balance sheet that is called as consolidated balance sheet we have to consolidate the balance sheet we have to make the balance sheet as a single balance sheet we have to any asset we have to add both the assets of the company holding company is building with subsidiary company is building if it is liability for example creditors will be there bp or bills payable will be there we have to add both the bills payable of the company add both the creditors of the company then we have to consolidate we have to make the balance sheet into one balance sheet that is the meaning of consolidated balance sheet my dear students from next session we are going to starting the problem on holding company simple problems it is very very easy topic it is very very easy problems are there marks oriented please understand this chapter it is very very important chapter we will meet in the next session till then thank you so much